background. So thanks so much for joining me. Um, I hope you're all enjoying a long, um, the start of a long Jubilee weekend. Um, if you're not starting a long Jubilee weekend, I hope you're having a lot of fun anyway. The sunshine came out, which was brilliant. I am in red, white and blue um, as homage to um, HRH. I have my corgi flags in the background. So we are ready. And um, Willow is here, um, ready for you all to start. So I just wanted to say, quick, we'll get started in a moment. Fortunately, I've given us two hours, so I've given us plenty of time. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. So sorry about the sound at the start. Just had to log off and come back on again. No idea why. But here we are. Um, there is um, a link to the website in the description because there is um, I've put a big Jubilee sale on today. But if you are part of the newsletter group or a member of the Felt Hub, then you can use your Felt um, Hub and the Felt Club codes and you can double dip on the sale. I know. Um, so if you just go onto the web page, the link's in the description, it'll take you to the Jubilee sales section and you can actually use your um, VIP code there in the coupon box at the checkout. So that will be running for the entire weekend and sort of till Monday morning. If you don't know what your code is, check your email because I sent one out to the news for the newsletters today. Some of you cross over anyway. And if you're in the felt hub, then I popped a post up with the felt hub code. So make the most of um, a double dip weekend because it's not something I usually do, but um, I just thought I'd make the, the most of it. I was in jolly good mood. Um, so, <laughs> so grab things while, while you can. And um, if I run out of something, um, I'll put it on back order for you. If, um, but only order it if you're happy to wait about a week and a half um two weeks because it takes a while for me to get my stock in um i get it in the uk but obviously they're they're super busy so and and i use different suppliers for different things all uk businesses so there you go um loads um i've even i've reduced massively some of the patterns so if you want to have a go at daphne our Daphne, which a lot of you will remember from the Felt Hub, then um, all the patterns are on sale. Most of the wool bundles, a lot of the wool is on sale. Core wool is on sale because I know a lot of you like to use um, a lot of core wool. The um, da, 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 Shetland pre-felt, that is on sale as well. Um, so there's loads on there. And the giant needle felting kit bundles are also on sale. So they're on sale and you can use your discount, woo woo. So there we go. So I am here, I am ready, got my my corgi flags. Um, I hope you've all had a great day. Thought I would kick off with a corgi joke because it's obviously, it just seems right. So joke is, why are most corgi jokes such bad jokes? because they're too short. Sorry, that's about as good as it gets. If I start on my pirate jokes, then you know you really have permission to, to log off because, um, oh, I'll just tell you one pirate joke. Okay, um, I love my pirate jokes. Why do pirates always get the bus? Because they don't like traveling in the car. There you go. <laughs> I, told you, I told you it was bad. Said it was bad. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Who's ready to start making um, Willow the Corgi? Um, she is very pleased to join you. If you have your um, packs with you, you'll have everything you need. Um, if I, I missed a couple of reverse felting needles, um, which have gone out and you've messaged me, so sorry about that, but literally they are sold out. Corgis were flying um, last week. It, I grossly underestimated how popular she was going to be. But the amazing thing is, I'll show you some tricks later on. You, you don't just have to make a corgi. There's so much you can do with these techniques. So all you need is your felting mat with a, a topper of some kind. Um, a foam mat is absolutely fine as well. Um, again, always use a topper because it just makes it last so much longer. And then all you need is I am using, I've got a 40 there for the face details, but all I'm using, um, and you can use this for the entire project, 
is a 38 star and I use the German Gross Eckbert needles I think they are so these are the really good quality needles that I use um, they are definitely worth the extra pennies just because they they work so well so if you are um really thinking about doing needle felting sort of seriously as a hobby try and try and get some decent needles if you can um they're not too much more expensive i know well actually you know you can get a load of the chinese ones for for, for a lot less but i do find them difficult and you will find that it changes how you needle felt um so i would definitely advise that if you can spare a little bit extra so you will need your wooden barbecue skewer so this is this is optional but it does make a massive difference it makes things so much easier and then um you can use carded wool or you can use wool top either works absolutely fine for this um and that's and we're doing the head and the body and the legs separately we've got some nice sort of pure black wool here for face details but any dark wool will do and then I've got this. If you've got the kit, you've got this beautiful, it's called Sienna. And I have this specially dyed because normally it's only available um, as a merino colour, Sienna. But this is Shetland and I have this specially dyed in the Sienna colour. Um, and I'm going to have to place another big order. I have to order something like 10 kilos at a time. So um, I'm going to place another big order for that. But um, it, it's it's gorgeous and it's perfect for the the corgi but any any sort of brown light mid sort of mid brown anything with a bit of sort of um tan color to it something sort of a little bit orangey would work and then if you remember when we made um daphne here the chicken we did a top coat to really smooth it out well that's how we have done willow and um it just means it just makes it so much easier because once we put the head on and the nose we put on separately as well it just makes it so much easier just to to pop it over and then felt around it and we've got this perfect body shape so here we are thank you for sticking with me everyone you are absolute diamonds and i didn't swear even when you couldn't hear me just in case you could so um, I'll come in with some more corgi jokes later on. If anyone else has any um, royal jubilee jokes, make them clean, please. Um, that would be brilliant. Okay, right. So we are going to start with the body. Now, I'll just measure this. The entire thing. So the body is going to be only about five and a half centimeters. And then we add the head as well. So I tend to guesstimate things, but take your wool top. You, um, I think I've used for the entire dog, this, this carded wool, sorry, or wool top. I think I've used about 14 grams, if that helps. Um, but anyway, we're just going to start. We're going to make a really sort of rough shape around our barbecue skewer. And we use a wooden one. We use something wooden because it just the wool just holds really well. And remember, if you're using the carded wool, hold it close to the skewer because it's shorter fibers. It will pull away more easily. It, it's not a, an issue if it does. You just add some more and continue. But we just we're keeping our fingers there. And what we don't want to do is we want to keep this wool nice and flat. We don't want it to twist. So we just hold it there. And then if you want, if you feel that to one side I don't matter. this is the 38 don't use a fine needle when you're doing this they bend so easily and then just a few tacks with that needle just to hold it there and then continue to wrap Oops. and what we're aiming for we're aiming for a sort of chubby cone shape so it's going to be narrower at the top and then fatter at the bottom and we're just going to keep wrapping and it will look all unsightly, but that's OK. And then we've got to here. So I'm just going to felt that again. And we're not really creating the shape so much yet. And what I would say is um, whichever end you decide is going to be the neck end, keep it loose because we want um, it makes it much easier to attach to the head. So let's keep going. So 
So I hope you've all had a, a lovely day if you've been out and about. I know some of you are going to watch the beacons being lit at nine o'clock, so might be leaving early. Um, oh, I think Pam asked earlier what I use for the eyes. I use um, little glass beads, but you can felt them on. These are on stalks, so I can just pop them pop them in um, and glue them if I need to. But if you've got a, a pack, you'll also ha you'll have the lovely glass beads that you can sew on as well. So I, I like using glass beads for a lot of projects actually especially those because they've got that really nice shine so keep wrapping and then just again just secure it and let's see what we've got here yeah, so I really don't want to be any longer than that. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to make this the bottom. So I'm just going to tuck those ends in with my needle. So you're going in flat. And keep our fingers there because we don't want to come down any further than that. And now we're going to build it up. And I'm just going to pull some wool off. And keep it tight. You want that nice and tight. The tighter it is, the less felting you have to do. And if you wanted to, what you could have done as well, if you make it easier, you could actually split that down the middle. Um, that sometimes makes it easier to um, create your shape. You've got less bulk sort of going on. Just watch your fingers. Keep this base flat. We'll come back to that in a minute. But that is what Willow is going to sit on. I'm just building this up a little more. I'm just going to pull that off now and just work on this and see where we see where we get to. So these loose bits, just tack those on. And we're not too concerned about any lumps and bumps here. We want a nice shape, but remember, we're going to cover it with that um, carded batting. You don't have to do that. So if, you, if, you, if you're not covering it, then obviously make sure that it's nice and smooth. You can use a 36 for this as well, or um, I, these are really good. You can, you know, use this when, um, when it comes off the stick. Or if you've got a clover pen, again, you've got two needles there, but you actually only need one. This is about six centimeters, Meg. Yes, yeah, Sally's saying that a crochet hook knitting needle is good. Yeah, any suggestions, please pop them in the comments. And um, it would be really lovely if you could just sort of give the event a thumbs up. It just makes me more visible on YouTube. As you know, it, all my tutorials, my video tutorials and um, many written tutorials are all completely free. Um, so the more people that interact with me, the more people get to see them. And the more people get to learn about this amazing craft. So that I'm just working around. So it's starting to firm up nicely now. And because we pulled it quite tightly around the barbecue stick when we um, when we wrapped it round, that makes it much quicker and easier to felt. Forgot about the neck. Keep this, sorry, I forgot about the neck there. Just keep this neck loose because you want to be able to have some, and we can add fresh wool. And then I'm just going to go to the base again. When we take this off and when we're doing our final um, bits of the project we can we can make sure it's nice and stable and now can you see I'm just going diagonally because I'm just you know I want to sort of smooth and shape that top layer and I'm going in the direction so I want to narrow it that way so I'm working backwards from the wider end and the needle is pointing towards the end that I'm wanting to narrow And can you see how that's made? So rather than just going straight in, 
which really is just going to felt that area. When you do this, you actually, this is your shaping process. The widest edge, Sandra, is um, it's about four and a half. Let's see, when it's finished, it'll be slightly wider, about five, probably once we've got our batting and our top layer on. But this is about four, four and a half. But really, I mean, you can you can do, you know, any size you want. You can go bigger, smaller. Just make sure it kind of looks in proportion, you know, when you get the head on. But this, if you've seen my other tutorials, um, this is just a simple shape that we created. Remember, we did parsley hair. This is just a variation of that, except parsley hair was super long and, uh, you know, uh, much narrower at the top and much longer. But it's very, very much the same. I mean, if you've, I don't know how many of you have never used a, a wooden barbecue skewer to create your shapes, but it really is a game changer for any needle felter, I, I believe. And if you are, you know, a lot of people think that they have to have wire in their needle felting projects. You absolutely don't. In fact, I tend to use wire le less than I don't. Then it, it just, for me, the barbecue skewer just negates the need for that for many projects. And if you look at the parsley hair tutorial, you'll see those super long legs are really firm. And the barbecue skewer has allowed us to create those legs without faffing about with wire. I quite often just use wire in legs or in the neck if I want it to tilt and pose. Um, but I like a really firm body and I find it difficult to I just don't get on with a full frame. But, you know, I've done them and I've, I've had great results, but I just prefer a nice firm felt around the body so that I've got a really firm scaffolding. I can sort of add stuff to. And it is it is horses for courses, I know. Right. I'm just going to here. I just feel like I just need to make that base just a little bit wider so i'm just going to pull off just a little piece i'm just going to felt that on here and again if you've got a nice coarse wool top i use those as well for this um jacob swaledale shetland all work really well and it's all under cover anyway it's going to be covered up but even if it's not, still work just as well. You just need to, to make sure that you spend a bit more time than I do smoothing it and shaping it. And use your hands as well. You can roll it in your hands and use your needle as well. This Doing that with your needle really smooths things out. Jennifer, you've never used this method before. Oh, it's it's great, Jennifer. You know, once you've tried it, and, and I think as well, I mean, for all needle felters, it, it's brilliant. But if you've just started needle felting, oh, man, it it just takes, you know, some of the stress out of when you start. Because, you know, it can be really stressful. And even though it isn't, it, it's the thought of doing it that is stressful, not the actual sort of physicality of of, of felting. Um, um if you're in the felt hub, I did um, a, a, my top tip Tuesday post, which I'm really enjoying, actually. Um, it's all about finding your needle felting confidence. Even if you've started needle felting and, you know, you want to move on to the next stage and you, you don't feel quite ready. Um, it's it's a really encouraging blog post and hopefully it will give you the the oomph to just pick up those felting needles and have a go because it doesn't matter. Remember, it is all about you. It's what you are making. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Don't show it to anyone if you don't want. It's it's about what you get out of it and nothing else. And your mental health, believe me, will thank you for it. There we go. So we've got quite a nice shape going on here. I hope you're getting on OK with that, too. Um, I am going to take this off the stick now and just carry on with it for a little while. But can you see? that is firm but still squishes you know it's not over felted and don't worry about any bits that you've got in there because they'll be covered up if not just just tease them out and i'm just again working diagonally just creating this shape i 
can't believe I lost that sound at the beginning. Can you believe that? As if. Oh, that, last night, did it about 10 times. Oh, yeah, working great. Today, 10 times. Oh, yeah, working great. 20 minutes before, no, 30 minutes before we started. Yeah, working great. Did a sound check, went and um, replayed it. Yeah, working great. Went live. Oh. My hobby does say I'm jinxed when it comes to technology. I'm not jinxed in, I mean, I learn. I know how to do it all. Um, I've taught myself um, since I started in 2014. I mean, I didn't even have Facebook in 2014. But for some reason, you're just going to have to get used to me, guys. You know, <laughs> expect the glitches. What can I do? There we go. So that is the shape. Do you remember the last event we came on and I had a power cut 10 minutes in? That was the um, that was a soak away pump, which I then had to go outside and replace after the event. And I got bitten 13 times by mozzies, 13 times. I just spent the whole weekend scratching. It was horrible. But anyway, we did it. There we go. Body ready. Let's move on to the head. So here we are. Let's think. Shall we? Yeah, I think what we'll do is if you've got quite a thick bit of wool, then split it down the centre and we're going to do the old favourite knotting technique. And you could, again, create this on the barbecue skewer, which I've shown you before, but we're going to do this slightly differently today. We'll just do this with the knot. So take it, hold it close to the centre and pull a knot. Keep your fingers close so the wool doesn't pull away and pull a knot. And then... Do the same. Yeah, feel free, guys, if um, to drop any links in for any tutorials you've come across. If anybody, if you think it might be really um, helpful. Yeah, Chopstick is good, Christine. Um, yeah, absolutely. Just make sure you felt that whole, uh, felt the gap at the end. But a Chopstick is fine. There we go. We've got a, a second knot there. Shall I be brave and go for a third knot? Because what this does is it reduces so much felting. There we go. We've got a third knot. Now, if you feel that, you've got a nice sort of circular shape already, and it's really firm. So that's the kind of core of your, of your head already created. So you've saved time, and you've got a nice shape. So then what we're going to do, we're going to take the tail, and we're just going to wrap it around like so on one side and that's the end bit there so we're just going to felt those in there we go so you see Lovely shape already, super fast. Just this little bit here that's loose. Just felt around there where that tail's sticking out. And then the other tail, we are going to keep it tight and wrap around again. And remember, again, this is going to have a car the carded wool on top. It's going to be slightly bigger. And I don't want it as a perfect circle. Don't aim for a perfect circle like a, a felt ball because um, corgis are, are slightly wide of, of the face when you look at them. Um, so we don't want it perfectly round, but we do want it nicely shaped. So now when you're felting around, all you're really doing is going through this top layer because that center is so firm, there's no need to do anything with that. So keep it moving. Yes, Sally, I have, um, there is a great, if, you, if you're, you're on YouTube, by the way, if you can't leave a comment, it would be because you're not signed on to YouTube. So if you want to leave a comment, you need to sign in. I found that the other day when I was doing a test, you know, the ones that worked really well every time. I think it's just going to be my thing 
technology. Sarah Brown in um, in the original Needle Felting UK group, she, she knows about my technical problems. Bless her. When I've done events there. Hates me. There we go. So let's have a look. So that's a good shape. But I do think we need to add a little bit more. So I'm just going to take a thin piece like this. And this, these are going to sort of be my cheeks. So I'm just going to wrap this around like so. They'll probably change and my cheeks will probably end up on the other side. But I just felt it just needed to be a little bit bigger there. And so that that's a key point really when needle felting is you can always add more but once you've felted things on unless it's a limb or an ear or something like that which you can pull off quite easily and change when you're doing the bulk parts like head and the body when you felted it you can't unfelt it all those fibers have locked together um i mean i have been known to chop heads off and and add some fresh wool if i've spent a lot of time on a head Oh, well, I remember, if anybody's interested in doing realistic eyes as well, um, on the blog, there is a great um, tutorial. If you're in the Felt Hub, it is on Top Tip Tuesday, I think, for last week, um, was eight steps to easy needle felted eyes. And I can't remember who posted a picture of the eye that they'd done, but it was brilliant. They'd done so well. And they, I know this particular person had been quite nervous um uh ab about some of the the felting techniques and she just went and followed my eight step technique and made this perfectly beautiful eye um so it's just about breaking it down keeping it simple and anyone who has been using my techniques for a while will know that i am all about simple because if it isn't people are put off and it makes me sad when people are put off crafts, any crafts, not just needle felting. OK, so there we go. So as you can see now, what you can do is you can use your fingers to shape it. So we've got some nice. Can you see that's going to go on lovely. And what you can also do is if you want to just smooth it, you can just pop it in your hands. If you're not using a top layer, this is a really good tip. OK, Meg, this is, you can see that, about three and a half centimetres across both ways. But if you want to widen it, just squish it with your fingers and that will kind of squash it down. And I'm just poking around with my fingers here because I kind of want to bring those this top part in so it's got more of a head there we go so can you see how i've just used I'm showing you that backwards now i've just used my fingers just to sort of squish up the head there but we can add more on we'll come back to that i'm just going to still a little bit soft there i'm just going to felt that down a little bit So now what we need to do is look at the head and decide which is going to be the front. OK, so your eyes are going to be around here. And what we want to do is we want to create this. This protruding nose, not too much. Now. I always do this separately. I never try and shape it with it, with it. You know, I never try to create a shape with that protrusion the same with legs and things like that um, I did when I started and then I quickly learned that so that's like the hard way so all you want to do is just take a really small piece of um, wool I mean you could all actually I'll show you you can do this on the barbecue skewer you can just wrap it round the skewer like so And just felt it on. Keep the ends loose though. Don't felt those ends. Oh, 
And what you'll find with this is you might do it a couple of times. You know, it might be the wrong shape. It might be the wrong size, but that's OK. But important, keep these ends loose because these are what we're going to attach to the face. So we want this nice and firm. And the reason it needs to be nice and firm is because once we put the batting on top or not, if you're not using the batting, you're going to put the, the detail of the nose on. Now, if this isn't firm, and this is really important, this isn't firm, you're going to distort the shape. And you don't want to do that. So we sort of aim to get this center part really firmly felted whilst leaving these ends loose. And it looks really long, maybe too long actually, but we shall see, I might be able to, to fix that when I put it on. Let's, uh, let's go down this length and shorten it. So you can see how I'm shortening that just by pushing straight down the entire piece, watch your finger at this end, it's shortening it, but I'm not felting these ends. Okay, so take that off and let's have a look there. So it's going to go here. So can you see how we're going to do that? We're going to have this protruding nose. And I think, I think that'll be okay actually. So I'm going to hold that on like so. Hold one end, felt it on. That's why the loose parts are important. Same this side. We've kind of got this weird, oh, I've used this before. I use this for gnome noses. That's a great technique for making gnome noses, by the way. And then just make sure, and then just go around these edge parts here. And just make sure they're attached to the face. So we're going to have this nice protrusion here. And then if it's a bit if it's sticking out too far, then just go into it from the front. There we go. So what will happen is we'll cover this up and we won't see any of that. But what I've got here now is I've got no chin. So I'm going to add just a little bit more wool under here so we don't lose that chin. So it all seems a little bit haphazard, and um, which it is at the moment, but we are sort of creating the base for our final piece. And it's all, it's not difficult, it's just about knowing how to do it. And you, you know, you may, you may, I'm sure you have lots of different techniques that work for you, maybe, you know, better, or you have a preference, but there you go. So can you see, I'll pop that on the side. And then we've got this here. So create that shape and then put another layer of wool on top and that will cover all these seams. Get it as nicely shaped as you can before you do that because what you don't want to do is over felt the um, top layer here and that is quite nice and then I'm just going to there's a little bit too much line going on here so I'm just going to just pop a little bit in there just to smooth that area out just bring that around the edges There we go. So can you see now how we've we've built up on that shape? I bet I end up with a wonky nose because it's live. There we go. And then, you know, later on we can still do that. But can you see now how that's coming together? I hope you're getting on OK. I mean, don't worry if, if you know, take your time. 
because this is um, on replay or catch up, as you would call it. I, I don't know. Replay or catch up. It's always going to be here. And what I will do is I will download it as well and I'll put it in the felt hub for you. So you can go to the um, the different sections in there. And then everything's in one place. Um, the reason I've come on to YouTube um, to do the live is because I'm finding a lot of problems with buffering on Facebook. And um, it just seems to work better on YouTube, <laughs> she says. I'm using um, something called StreamYard to do live events, which is absolutely brilliant when it works. But just sometimes it can glitch and it always does it at the wrong time. But fingers crossed, please. There we go. So that is the head. OK, that is the head done. And that is going to sit on the body. Now, when I say that this is basically a base for anything you want to make, I made a little, this was a couple of weeks ago, did something very, I used a very similar same technique and I made this fox. And can you see, I've done exactly the same, just slightly different shapes. So you could make a whole array of sort of woodland animals doing, um, uh, using this technique, sheep, hares. Um, chickens, anything you like. So you can have a whole lot of fun with that. And it's really, you know, really simple. Um, I may put a kit together with something like this where, where you can make several animals. I don't know. I'll see how I get on for time. I promised I wouldn't do any more kits until Christmas because um, I just haven't got the time, but I can't. So I've come up with an idea and then I can't help myself. Um, but there you go. So that's um, that's yeah. The fox is lovely. Yeah, it was just a first attempt at something. That's you know. And I thought, oh well, I like that, and I'm sure we can do something else. And then I thought, oh, I'll do a corgi. Um, so we are still doing the body. We stick the needle in, but it seems to pull more wool out. No, no, no. You that means you're using your reverse needle, Sam. You need to be using your 38 star needle, just your standard needle. You don't use the reverse needle till the end. So if you're pulling wool out, that's why. Um, yeah, so if you just change needles, Sam, you should be okay. Okay, so there we go, head and body. Okay, next, we're going to make the legs and we are going back to our barbecue skewer because this is what makes it so easy. So barbecue skewer. Just thin, these legs are quite short. In fact, I've got them sticking out too long here. When I add them to this one, I'll, I'll push them up a bit. Um, so can you see they're only about, so that is three and a half centimeters total, really doesn't need to be any longer than that, or, or an inch, about three centimeters, three and a half centimeters, or approximately an inch and a bit. So again, as we did before, we are taking our barbecue skewer. We're taking a thin piece of wool. Doesn't matter whether it's carded or wool top. Just keep it thin because what you don't want to end up with is really bulky legs. So let's just get wrapping that round. And this is really easy because there's no shaping to this. So keep it pulled really tight. When we, if you've done parsley, you will know the hair. You will know what I am talking about. You want nice, firm legs, and you're going to keep one end loose. So let's just leave it there and just till it holds. Right. So I'm going to keep this end loose because this is where we're going to attach it to the body and keeping it, I mean, keep it really loose, like unfelted, because this is a great way of making sure that you don't see any seams or finishes. I know we're going to cover it up, but a lot of projects, we don't do that. So if you keep, always keep, that's the tip, keep the limbs Um, the where they're going to be attached, keep them loose. So I'm just going to pull that off, wrap that around there, and then you can just run it around your hand if you wish. 
I'm hoping that there's not too much light coming in from my right. It's it's dimming now, but um, I hope it's not too bright. There we go. Right, so now we've got that on, and because we wrapped it really tightly, it's already firm. Can you see? There's your paw already. And we're just pushing into that paw there, just turning the skewer and creating that leg. The first one's easy. It's getting the second one to match that's, um, <laughs> that's fun. But there you go. Yeah, Sam, you'll be able to watch again. Yeah, it will take a while. Honestly, darling, it will. And um, it, once you've done it, though, you, you will have learned so much. And then the next one will be a breeze. It's like anything that you, you start. I think I said in my sort of top tip Tuesday um, post this week, you know, what we tend to do. There you go. Sorry, I'll just I'll just I'll come back to that in a moment. You see, that's our paw done ready really don't need to do any more than that and keep that nice and loose take that off now you've got that one for reference if you've got a little hole in the end just tease with your needle make sure you're using your 38 not your fine needle or your reverse so yeah so what we tend to do is we'll, we'll go on pinterest or or we'll go on to these gorgeous sites and we'll see all these amazing needle felted projects and think oh, i want to make that and then we go off and then we end up really disappointed. But really, is there any wonder? Because what you've done is you're on chapter one. The person whose project you've just looked at is probably on at least chapter five. So you can't compare those two. So you must start on chapter one. You know, allow yourself to learn. Allow yourself to be a beginner. And um, the rest will come really easily. Just take a deep breath and learn even if it's just creating basic shapes like this don't even start by making a project just start by getting your felting needle your mat and your wool and learning how it all meshes together there we go so that's one leg right here's the phone i'm going to try and make one that matches what i should have done was <laughs> pulled off two equal pieces of wool but because i'm a bit daft sometimes i didn't do that but yeah that's another tip take tear off two equal pieces of wool and then you will know. But the other the joy of doing it this way as well is if one's shorter or longer than the other, it doesn't matter. You just shift them up or down because you can just cover up the seams. So that doesn't matter either. So I'm pulling really tightly. Can you see how that's coming along nicely now? Let's have a look. How are we doing? Let's start to felt that in. So um is um anyone across the water? Did you did you manage to um see any of the royal celebrations today? I watched the Trooping of the Colour, which I just always oh, it's just so beautiful to see. It's um, it just amazes me um how incredible um those horses are. I mean the people as well, but the horses. I did see one running wild, though, without anyone sat on it. I don't know if anybody noticed that. I'm not quite sure what had gone on there, poor guy or lady. Nice to see lots of ladies there as well sat on the horses. This, um, You know, it's not something we would have seen a few years ago. So I'm just going to pull that off. Yeah, we're well, quite similar there. And I've just left this completely loose. Don't touch that. I'm just going to wrap this around. And just roll it around in my hand just to be like candy floss and then this is the paw so i'm just going to felt that in want that nice and firm yeah and when you and when you watch this on playback as well you can stop rewind you know just take your time that's going to be a little bit shorter, I think, by the looks of it. It's just what I can do is, though, I will show you. A lot of you will know how we um, how we make it longer when we take it off the stick. Anyone know? Can anyone remember?
There we go. So that's that's okay. So I'm going to take that off. Oh, the fly past, yeah. The parade, yeah, Sharon, it was amazing. So there we go. It's slightly shorter. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it in my hand like so and roll it. There you go. Now they're both exactly the same size. And that's all you have to do. So let's just firm up these feet. Doing good for time, quite pleased. Oh, also, if you couldn't get a crown when you ordered, I'm so sorry, but as you can imagine, <laughs> crowns were very popular. Um, I I can't even, I mean, I grossly underestimated, like I said, how many people would want a corgi. And um, I just I just didn't have enough crowns. Um, I just I just couldn't get any more. That's a little bit narrower. Don't have to do anything. But if you want, just a quick tip, pop a little bit around the base. And that will fatten that up a little bit. So it's the same size. There you go. Easy peasy. Like you say, you can always add more. Yeah, um, crowns, corgis were flying out last week. It was crazy. And then um, I went to order some more crowns to try and get them in. And um, the supplier had doubled the price. I mean, literally doubled the price overnight. And I thought, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. So um, I'm hopefully going to get some in, in a couple of weeks because they, funnily enough, the price has gone back down to normal now. Um, but it will be a few weeks before I can get any in. So I will be putting these back online with the crowns. And then what I'll do is I'll maybe pop some crowns in the shop as well, just in case you just want to, to grab a crown. Because they weren't cheap to start with, and then they doubled the price, and I'm trying to keep the prices. You know, I know mon money's tight for everyone at the moment. I'm trying to keep prices as low as possible, and I'm not going to be – I'm not going to pass on those prices to to people. It's just not fair. I get it, but, you know, there's, there, there is a limit. Right, there we go. Our little paws are there. OK, now, can you see on um, these pods, I've got these. Can you see that? Is that focused? These little details, um, if you want to add them. So all I've done here is the, the brown that I've used for the top layer of the body. I won't do all of them. I'll just quickly show you how to do it. Just You really want a super thin piece like so. Just roll it in your hand. Like this. And then felt one end in quite firmly because then you want to pull that around the foot to the other side and can you see when you do that how it leaves a little sort of indentation there it just creates some shape and then just go to the other side and then all you do is trim off the excess and then you do another one down the center I'm rushing these so they're probably going to be a little bit wonky another one down the center pull it quite tight out the other side trim it off and then you can do another one elsewhere so that's how I, I i do the little um the little details for the pause which is quite nice so as you can see what i always like to do is make all our parts separately so our legs are done so i think we'll make um we'll do the tail tail is really easy barbecue skewer again this is a great way to do this so thin piece of wool wrap it round get it started and it's all the same thickness again remembering to leave one end loose quite a bit on the end loose as well because we're going to um attach it to its bottom so there we go so work down 
keep working down and then work back up keep working I'll use all of this just so easy that wasn't I've hardly felted anything okay which bit I think this will be the the tip of the tail so it wants to be nice and round and then work down the sides diagonally And let's get this tail tip nicely felted. Now, if you wanted to do a standing dog, you know, sort of on all fours, you could easily do that. The reason I've done this is I only have two hours. You know, I think two hours is enough for a workshop for any of us. For me, it is anyway. Um, and I'm sure it is for you as well. But if you wanted to do a standing one, you could just adapt it. You can make the four legs, attach it to the, the side of the body um, and adapt that way. But all the elements are essentially the same. When we're going to add some top colour onto this as well, like we have done here. And we've just attached it at the base there. <laughs> Sam can have you wonky ones. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite funny Sam bless okay so there we see we've got this nice loose bit here just going to tighten that up and that's what's going to attach and again don't worry about too much about the length of the tail but this is including the loose bit that is oh around seven centimeters and just yeah about two and a half inches and there we go that's your tail done take it off just if you've got that little hole in the end just tease over with your needle And then just make sure it's nice and firm. And if you want to smooth it, because this uh, this won't have a, a top layer on, if you just want to smooth it, just roll it in your hands and make sure you've got any bits of grass out. Okay, I've got another corgi joke. What is a corgi's favourite dessert? A strawberry shortcake. I know, I know. You thought the pirate one was bad. <laughs> All right, I've got another pirate one. Why don't pirates smoke cigarettes? Because they prefer a cigar. I was telling that joke to my neighbour's kids one day and, and the mum piped up when I said, why don't I smoke cigarettes? She piped up, because it's really bad for you. <laughs> and I haven't finished the joke yet. <laughs> there we go. Tail. Done. I'm just going to pop the light on because I think we might be losing a bit of light here. Let's see if I'm going to affect the... <sighs> That's better. That's better. There we go. So head, body, tail, legs. Who wants to make some ears? I'm going to show you how easy these ears are to make. So what you want to do, and I remember to tell you this time, is two pieces more or less exactly the same. So let's just. There we go. So this is um, Shetland wool top that I'm using here, but it's really coarse. So the, you know, there's always the big argument, what's better, carded wool or wool top? So it depends what you're using. Merino is beautiful as a top coat, but really um, takes a long time to felt if you're doing this kind of thing. But if you're using a nice coarse wool top, which is all often called roving as well, you might you might refer to it as roving, you can create 
pieces that are just as lovely. The finish is just as good. And this is, um, a, if any of you have got the, the bundles, you'll feel this, you'll feel how rough it is. And then if you compare that to something like a Merino, it's like night and day and it felt really, really well. So I'm just going to pull a little bit off there, a little bit off there. So what you want to make sure is that you start off with two pieces that are equalish in size and shape, or you can weigh them. You can weigh them if, if, if you want to. Okay, so pop one there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, and you'll, um, if you follow my tutorials, you will have seen this technique before. I'm going to do draw a triangle with my needle, like so. Okay, can you see that? Just the outline of a triangle. And if you want, do them both at the same time. So then you know that you're getting roughly the same shape and size. But I'll show you once when we do the second ear, I'll show you how easy it is just to make sure it's exactly the same as the, the first one. So I'll just move that out of the way. And then just bring that over, that top part. Now, where you have drawn that line with your needle, can you see how it's just caught onto that wool top? And pull the wool over, and once it stops there, felt that down. Do the same at the other side. Just pull it over gently until it stops and felt it down. If you've got a multi-needle, you can speed it up by using that. Or your clover type tool. But don't do it for too long and then pull it away really gently because it will stick. Turn it over and continue to felt. Now, corgis have got quite a kind, quite kind of wide ears. They're not particularly cup shaped. They're, they are, and they've got this nice soft tip to them, so they're slightly rounded. So keep working on that. Keep turning. And then have I got a punch tool handy? I'm sure I have. If you've got one of these, the punch tools on offer in the shop, by the way, don't forget to use your double dip code. Um, what these do, I find as well, is they get a really nice smooth finish when you're doing flat felting. So if you're making like the big hair ears, this is perfect, but can you see? And the, uh, the more you felt, the more that wool becomes entangled and, 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 and stuck together, the easier it is just to flip it and turn it. And that's telling you that this wool is matting together really nicely. Don't worry about these edge shapes. We'll come back to those. And um, don't worry about having too much there either. So there we go. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go along with my needle. And then if you have your bit of cardboard that I told you about before, you can actually pop it or perspex. A lot of uh, I've seen people use perspex for this because then you can actually see inside. But you can also use that. Just make sure you don't slip down the side and that protects your fingers as well and allows you to create a nice edge. So can you see how that fluff is disappearing? So continue. These ears want to be nice and firm and quite, th you know, not, I think, how wide is that? That's about a mil and a half. No, it's not, because that's inches. No, it's not. That's about four mils wide, uh, thick at the moment. Probably be a bit less, but um, it wants to be around three mils because it wants to be nice and firm so you can kind of just twist it and shape it. And then work along the other edge.
and then come back to your punch tool. Always straight in and out with the punch tool. Never go, even though you can go diagonally with a single needle, you can't do that with a punch tool. And you should all only be going through the top layer and never twist. Never twist because you will break all the needles. If, if you use it properly, it will last and last. This has got... This has got seven needles in and you can reduce that to however many you want, depending on your project. So um, I think I've got, uh, you know, you reduce it to five and, and the thicker your, your project gets, the less needles you will need. But can you see how that ear is nicely shaped? Now, we've got quite a few whiskey bits on here and you can felt them in. But I'm just going to, because this is felted and um, because it's not a woven fabric, it's not going to fray. It's not stitched. So you can just go along those edges and take off any wisps. And you can do the same along the top as well. If you want it really sort of wisp free. And I think you can iron it as well to flatten it. I think people find it, but obviously use a, a tea towel or something on top and, and not too hot a setting. But I know you can um, flatten things by ironing them as well. But really, you don't need to with this. So can you see you've got that really nice shaped here? So we're going to go back to this one now. And I feel like this hasn't got quite as much wool on. So I'm just going to pop a bit more on there. Probably have too much now. So I'm just going to... Oh, we're doing plenty of time. 45 minutes. We've got this. I didn't want to rush you tonight. That's why I've, I've kind of taken a bit more time. I just wanted to spend time going over techniques and just so it's a little bit relaxed. There we go. Pull that over. And what that does is it creates a nice um, soft edge. There's no sort of raw wool on the edge there to try and felt in. Pull it over. Pull the other side over. Yeah, um, because if you are trimming, just be careful. You really, you're just going along the wisps. I mean, I've I've chopped into ears before. It is quite easy to do. There we go. Turn that over. So I hope you're all getting on okay. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, the the the. The great thing about this is, you know, these techniques you can apply to so much. So, um, you know, whatever you're making, try and work easy techniques into your projects. It just um, it just makes it less um, frustrating, especially when you've started. Right, I'm going to go to my punch needle now. Just want to speed this up. This is one of my go-to tools when I'm flat felting. I don't know about anybody else, um, but I just love this. If it's for like a body, obviously you can't you can't use that on a body, um, and it doesn't work so well on foam. Let's have a look. Let's have a little demo. See, it would work on foam, but it's a little bit. It tends to bounce. So if you if you're working on foam then what I would do is I would take some of the needles out and maybe work with five or four needles instead of the um, seven. So you can still work with the foam, but it does tend to bounce more. Yeah. A lot of people, Sally, will be doing that, watching it and then do it on replay. And I always say, you know, if you if you buy one of the kits, I mean, my. Someone mentioned the other day that they, they were trying to make a bear and they were really struggling, but the, the instructions were rubbish. And so then that's not your fault. You're not doing anything wrong. If you've not got the right instructions, you're not going to be able to do it. And um, the one thing that I pride myself on is, is my instructions. I take so much time on them. I photograph every stage. And there's a lot of video tutorials. I don't do a video tutorial for every single project. But there are a lot, but there are a lot of video tutorials on this channel in the Felt Hub on YouTube, same as the, the Felt Hub on Facebook. And... Um, you know, there's a section on body shapes. So 
you can use that to create your basic body shapes and then you can you know make whatever you want from those so legs arms heads basic simple shapes if you want to make a hair and you want to learn how to use the barbecue skewer then look for the parsley hair tutorial because that is the entire piece apart from the ears is made around the barbecue skewer and i absolutely love that project um you know especially with the frill on the neck it just gives it such a sort of folky folk art sort of whimsical feel it's it's lovely okay so we kind of want we you know we want both ears to be very similar in shape i actually done really well it's not <laughs> unlike me i've managed to get them very similar but you can still see it needs a little bit of shaping so your first ear pop that on top of the second one and use that as your guide and then just work around so the, the ear i'm working on is the one at the bottom And if you're finding it's getting quite firm and, and difficult to, to work, then this is the, I've moved to the 40 triangular because I'm just going through these edges and top layers. And that seems to be working quite nicely. There we go. So I'm quite happy with that. Now, what I have noticed, though, is that this one is narrower than this one. So rather than try and make this narrow, what you can do is um, just pull pull with your fingers and that will widen it and then just want to narrow this top part a little bit more so please use your cardboard if you feel a bit safer that way or your finger protectors keep it flat and it should keep it away from your fingers don't you know don't poke and you want this nice and flat There we go. I mean, they're never going to be exactly the same, but I think they're as near as damn it. I'm pretty pleased with that. And then I just added a tiny bit of sort of less is more detail here. And you can add some dark in as well. So I'm just going to take some of that. Um, I like to use carded wool for this because what ha what I find is that carded wool you can really sort of fan it out, and you don't end up with any lines, and you hardly really need to to touch it so just with your 40 or your 38 but i'm using the 40 just just tack it on no more than that because if you if you do it if you overdo it you're going to create lines and it it doesn't matter if you know do it at different sides they don't you know the dogs are not symmetrical in, you know in their in their their colorings and patterns so There we go. So it just added a little bit of detail. And then we've got quite a lot here and I may end up cutting that, but we shall see. So they look huge, don't they? But honestly, when they go onto the head, they won't be like that. And what we'll probably end up doing is narrowing them a little bit further. But we've got the, the bones of it there. So we've got everything. We've got our body, our head, our legs, our tail and our ears. So we're now ready to attach it. We take a sip of water. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is attach our head. Let me see, where are we? Yeah, so that is, so can you see we kept this loose for a reason. So what I'm going to do, and this will end up all over the place to start with, I'm going to put the head down like that. Make sure you've, you've got it right way up. So this is the, let me check. Yeah, this is the chin and this is the top of the head, but I might actually swap. I think I'm going to swap that around, actually. <laughs> um, there you go. That's what happens. So I'm going to put that there. And this loose wool that you can see there, I'm going to stick that on top of the body and I'm going to with my other needle gone that one I'm going to stick that on there and I'm just going to felt it so can you see these loose bits I'm going to go in from the top and I'm just going to poke in 
straight down. See that's starting to hold. Just keep turning it around and we'll don't worry too much about the position at the moment. We just kind of want to get it get it attached very loosely and then we'll decide where we're going to reposition. Okay, so now my nose is on the top of my head. Which is <laughs> so I need to move that. I need to move that down. So I'm going to hold it there. So this is fiddly, but not difficult. I'm going to poke that head down. I'm going to push through the head into the neck. I'm going to do the same here. And just move it about as you think it needs moving. Don't worry about any unsightly lines or marks going to be covered up. So that's that's coming on. OK, so that's still very wobbly, but we're going to put some wool around the neck because have, have, uh, if you notice with the corgi, there's no sort of you, there's no sort of difference, differentiation. I can't even get my words out tonight, but you know what I mean. But um, that neck just and the head just kind of blends into the body. So we're going to deal with that in a moment. There we go. So that now is on quite firmly. You don't want it wobbling about. And then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of carded wool or wool top, whatever you're using, just a thin piece. And I'm going to pop that around the neck there. And this will be covered up again. So don't worry, we're just thickening out this neck because we don't really want a neck. There isn't one. It's going to work around the head. And what this also does is it allows us to attach it even more firmly. So just work around the neck. So base of the neck, top of the body, work that in. And then round again. We kind of want that neck to disappear so it looks as if it's uh, it looks as if we've made it all as one piece and that's all you need to do it's really as simple as that really there we go so can you see how that Still think that nose needs to come down a little bit. I'm just going to push that in. You can be really rough with this as well. That that nose just seems to be sticking in the air a little bit for me. That's better. That's better. There we go. And these are great little things to sell at um, events. If you're doing craft fairs um, and you're selling your little felties, you can do these in a couple of hours. So, you know, you can you can sell them at craft fairs, but never don't undersell yourself. You know, don't stick them on for a fiver. You've spent all your time creating it. Obviously, if you've just started and, and, and you know, you, you're just sort of testing the water, then, you know, you can sell them cheaper. But once you've, you know, got quite good at it, you want to be up in those prices. That's how I, I started doing a lot of events. And I'm quite intolerant of people who complain about prices, to be fair. And I've had the comments, oh, I can make one of those at home. So, so go on then. Bring it back when you've done. We'll have a felt off if you like. <laughs> sarcasm. Love a bit of sarcasm. There we go. So head now attached to body. Yay. So let's have a look. Where are we at? I think we're at the stage now where we are going to add that top coat. Let's just go to the base here. 
make sure this is nice and flat. Yeah, and you can also push it down to flatten it as well if it's a little bit unstable. Okay, looking good. Right, let's crack on with this top coat. So I've got here some carded um, batting. Um, you can use Jacob. Um, I think this is Jacob. Uh, we used Perrindale for the chicken, which because um, I wanted something a slightly a little bit whiter. But I think I've got carded Jacob here, which is also, I mean, there's not that much difference between the two. But what I'm going to do is I am going to separate it. And we're going to start and we're going to sort of cover it from the top and then work down. But let's make sure that any thin bits are not at the front. So can you see what I've done? I've just basically covered it. It looks like a ghost now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it there. I want to pull it quite snugly over that face. Can you see what I've done there? Don't worry about this. This is the bit that we need just to attach. So I'm just going to, I'm going to be covering this with a top coat. So we don't need to worry about any needle marks. I'm using a 40, but a 38 is absolutely fine. And then just work down diagonally. And what we don't want is we don't want any bagginess. So that's why we pull it down just a little bit with our hands, but not, not so much that we actually tear it. And then again, working down, we'll get rid of all this bulk in a minute. Bring it down here. And can you see now we've got this nice protrusion for the nose, but it's it's complete, it's just completely transformed now that we've covered it. And then we'll get the nose on. And I'm gonna felt a bit more fiercely at the back here because this bit is all going to be covered. So I'm not too concerned about over felting this at the back here but i want it nice and secure and then just make sure you're working diagonally because what we're going to do is we're going to pull that we're going to pull a lot of this off and then just those ends are just going to be felted at the base so we're not going to see any of that let's work on this front so I'm just going to, I'm going to hold here at the base and I'm just so I'm not pulling all of this and I'm just going to take off some bulk. And that is the front. So let's pull that round here and just felt underneath just so that's holding. So I want the front nice and smooth. The legs are going on. So again, most of it's going to be covered. Don't get too precious. And if you pull a bit away or there's patches, um, the bits that you pull off, you can just use those to cover up. Just going to work down this neck. Because what we don't want is we don't want any gaps. We want it all close to the, the shape that we've created underneath. I will try and get finished for nine, but we might just run over 10 minutes. Hopefully not, but I'd rather do it right for you than, than rush it. Can you see now how I'm going to get move away from this 40 because I don't want to use the 40 to drag the wool because it tends, it can break the needle. So I'm just going back to this 38 so I can just grab hold of this wool and just Pull it underneath. I'm just going to take a little bit more off. Like I said, I'm not too concerned about making gaps in the back because it will be covered. And then just pull this around the base. And we can trim the base as well because we've, we've got quite a lot going on here. I'm just turning it upside down. Oops, I'm out of shot. Sorry. There we go. So can you see? You really go at it at the base. That's where you want it nice and firm. 
got some loose here. <laughs> Cuppa, strawberries, Nutella, and watching felt in happy days. Yeah. Yeah, mine used to be a Red Bull and vodka. Now I can't have a coffee after six o'clock. Um, <laughs> I tell everyone I was a wild child. And I was, honestly. No one believes me. I like a glass of wine, but only if I'm eating. <laughs> I get a hangover if I have two. And I really can't. I don't do hangovers. I just don't. I lost too many hours in my youth with hangovers. Right, there we go. Uh, yeah, Lynn, um, a brush mat. Yes. Do you know what? I'm going to try a brush. I have got a brush mat and I've never really used it properly. So I am going to try that. Um, but it, yeah, apparently um, for ears and flat felting, it works really well. Let's just pull these little bits off. And get this felted in. Okay, so this is where we're at now. So we've got this nicely felt. Now I'm noticing I've got a little thin area here where that mouth was, which is where that it's most common for this to happen. So I'm just going to take a little piece of carded wool and I'm just going to add some more. There you go, it's easy to do. Then just pull that over the head and that will disappear. So if you've got any baldy bits, that's all you need to do. There we go. Now I would probably work this for a little bit longer, maybe five more minutes, because there's some air here, but um, I want to sort of crack on. I don't want to eke it out too long. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm just going to take my multi-tool and I'm going to felt this base a little flatter. I've got a little bit of a line going on here. But there you go. So just keep working that until you're completely happy with it. That's good. OK, so now what we're going to do is um, we'll pop our nose on, I think, because a top coat I can kind of put a bit on and then leave you to the rest. But I really want to show you how to do the nose. So um, I'm going to take the eyes out of here and just pop them here just so it gives us. And you can just use a, a dress pin if you wanted um, for this. And it just makes sure. I mean, you've got the center of your nose, but it just helps when positioning. So if you've got a dress pin, use a dress pin or something like that. Or just make a mark with a little bit of uh, a felt tip. So there we go. We can see where the nose needs to be. Now, this is, um, you can use any d dark wall. Like this is, um, I think this is Blue Face Lester. So what I'm going to do here is I've got the tiniest, I mean, a really small amount. Probably don't even need that much, actually. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to roll it in my hand in a circle with my finger. And then I'm just going to roll. And then I'm going to roll backwards and forwards so it's quite firm. And what I've created is a little seed shape. So if you can see that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold one end. I don't want it too far up the nose. I'm going to hold one end. I'm going to use my 40 and I'm just going to poke that in and turn that round and poke that other end in. Now, that's a good nose. 
that's a you know if you wanted to leave it at that you could but I'm going to shape mine a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work across the top just poking gently through you see and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my 38 now because we made it nice and firm remember this allows us to create that shape just pull on the wool just slightly and can you see how you're creating that v shape now more often than not you will do this two or three times before you are happy with it but the joy is it's just you just pull it off don't persevere if it's wrong take it off and start again and i'm not even going to mess with that anymore because it's not as good as that one but i just know oh, i can't help it i can't help it um just use that needle just to drag that shape out and then go back to your um your 40 which will push through that wool but i'm just going to leave it at that it could be better and I would mess about with it, but I'm not going to tonight. So there we go. That works a treat. And then using the same wool, I'm going to create a mouth. And you want a very, you want it thin, 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 thinner than that. Thinner than that even. Yeah, you've got a piece. Now make it thinner. Okay, see how thin that is. And just, it wants to be too long. Because what you're going to do is you're going to go just under the nose here. You're going to pop your fingers there at the side to hold it. And you're going to go through the center straight down, straight down with your needle. I'm using the 40. You can use a 38. But if you use a 40, then it reduces the distortion of that shape you've already created. So now... You've got that sticking out like so. And then all we're going to do, corgis seem to smile, don't they? Corgis seem to have a smile. I don't know anyone with a corgi. I have a terrier. But I've had a German shepherd and a, an Irish wolfhound as well. So there we go. Take your time with this. It's not right. Pull it off. That's all I can say. Make sure that's in there and then come round here. And what you want to do is you can you can get this later. Just find the end position. I might have gone up a little bit high there. I'm just going to come down a little bit here. Keep your finger there. What you don't want, because we will you're pushing that wool right in. And you what you want to do is you want to take this loose bit in. You don't want this bit to be pulling in. So keep your finger on that. Yeah, I'm just going to pull that one off because he's got a smile right up to his eye. And what I'll do is I'll trim off what you can do here. If you've done what I've just done, just go back and just trim that top layer off and then we can pop a little bit of white wool on. And then, so I'm just going to go in here. There we go. I'm going to trim. There we go. And then this side, 40 I'm using. Trim. And there we go. And then I'm just going to, with my 38, I'm just going to bring that up so it's got a little bit more. And pull that down. So you're just teasing that wall into position. I've been lucky with that, considering it's alive. I'm not going to push my luck. It could be better. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. I've, I'm not going to push my luck. You faff about as much as you like. That's what needle felting's all about, faff. Okay, so you can see there. 
Now, at this point, can you see, that could be a seal. I mean, that could be the makings of a seal. You know, you add your little, your little flippers and you add some markings and the little ears. You know, it could, it could be, you know, there's so many things you could turn that into. Which is why I'm saying these techniques lend themselves to so many things. There we go. Happy with that. Now I'm going to leave the eyes just there. And I'm going to get my wool top. And I'm just basically, I'm going to pull it over the head and I'll put that stripe in afterwards. And I'm going to pull it over the eyes. Like so. And I'm just going to poke it on. Eyes have disappeared, but that's OK. They will they will re reappear, as you can see on this one. And then I'm going to pop some wool down the back here. So we get a really good coverage. I'm just going to sort of get this on. Um, so you can see what it's going to look like, but I will spend more time working on it when we're done and then bring that underneath. There we go. So you see how easy that was. Let's have a look. There we go. So have a little bit more down the side there. And you're just tucking this on nice and gently. You know, pull it quite tight. And because it's a really coarse wool as well, um, it's not showing any marks really at all so I won't have to do much smoothing or too much diagonal felting afterwards or trimming any wisps there so this is a wool top I'm using or roving, you might call it roving. There is a difference, but I won't bore you, and it doesn't really matter. You call it whatever you like. Please ignore the disgusting comments. I will get rid of them. And I do have a filter on as well. Let's have a look. There we go. Blocked. <laughs> oh, dear. Some people. They just can't help themselves, can they? Oh dear, oh dear. People never cease to amaze me or disappoint, but at the same time, it never ceases to amaze me how much joy people can give. So I suppose you can't have one without the other. Right, here we go. So when you put your eyes in, or you can put your eyes in afterwards, but I'm just going to felt in around these.
let's reveal the eye. There we go. There it is. And then that allows that wool. So I just find that easier than sort of trying to work and just pop all the wool over and then put the eyes on afterwards if you want. Take them off after you've done the nose. Um, there we go. There we go. And see that? Coming along nicely. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a little bit of the brown, tiny bit of white. I'm just going to do one of the um, eyebrows. Oh, thanks, Zoe. What do you know about the comments? Oh, that's nice. Let me just... There we go. So take a little bit of the brown and the white and then just as you did with the nose, just roll it in your fingers to mat it a little bit, but leave those ends loose and then felt the loose bit at one side of the eye and then do the same at the other side. If you've got too much, take a bit off, but you can... Um, You can just felt that in. And there we go. So you've created a bit of shape and a bit of height to the eye. And you can do it a little bit more like I have on these. Taking the eyes out now so it looks a bit weird. But can you see there? And then... And then we are going to pop on our ears. Now, um, what I did, um, I'm going to felt this in a little bit because it's a little bit wide. So I'm just going to quickly felt that in. So again, once you've done it, you can go back, you can adjust. Let's take those in and I'm just going to trim a little bit of this off. I don't normally cut, but in this instance, it's fine because we've got a lot sort of going on here. I'm going to get rid of that and we can just pop some wool on top. So when you put your ear on, don't put them too far back at the back of the head because they actually sit more on the top. So just lay it on the top, grab your needle and then just felt in. Don't worry about positioning too much now just make sure that they're sort of sitting more on the top of the head than at the back and can you see how that's on and then what we're going to do here is going to push down through the side and what that does is it becomes sort of part of the head can you see that there I'm just going to bring that down a little bit further, a bit long. So I'm going to push through the back into the head here. So when you trim them, make sure you've still got some loose wool that you can use. But you can also, um, you know, once you've done that, to firm it up, you can add some more. Just to cover that up. So that's coming along nicely. And then just pull that out. And make sure you take your time with these ears when you're attaching them. I'm rushing a bit because I want, you know, I'm aware of, of time and that people have got things to do. And you're probably all exhausted if you're in the UK from your Jubilee celebrations or a bit tipsy. If 
you've got a glass of Prosecco or two in your hand. And then again, if one's bigger than the other, you can just pull them down, but just make sure that they're felted on top of the head so that they're actually sitting like so. I'm just going to pull that one down a bit. And then we'll pop the legs on. And then we are just about done. There we go. So I'm going to leave mine at that. I'm just going to felt in this ear here because it's sticking out a little bit. I want it to look like it's actually coming out of the head and not a standalone ear. And then just at the back here, where we've trimmed that wool, just pop a little bit of fresh wool on and that will tidy up those ends and secure it. And then legs and tail. So leg, make sure you've got it nice and loose. It wants to sit about there. So it wants to be flush with the base, slightly off center. I'm going to go in with my 40 because it's quite firm that. So I'm fine if I go in diagonally. And you see it looks really scruffy at the moment. Don't worry about that. I'm going to come back to it. There we go. Make sure that's on nice and firmly. And then if you want it to stop wagging about, just come a bit further down. Just poke through a couple of times. Take the other leg, which is a bit longer. Can you see? But I'm just going to... Firm that up a little bit. Go in with the 38. There we go. And then the important thing is that these are in the same position. Doesn't matter about the length of that, and I can actually pull a little bit off. So pop that in. Oh no, sorry, I'm using the wrong leg. That's the tail. Sorry, guys. I'm using the tail. I've, I've got more bits of my tail now. There we go. Okay. There we go. So they are pretty much where they should be. And then I'm going to pop some wool over this section here. And that, if you just work that for a little while, that covers up any joins that you have. Let me see. So it looks really good. And then the tail, I'm just, the tail that I thought was a leg, um, I'm just going to pop a little bit of my brown on. And all I'm going to do is just attach a little end and then just spread it out and wisp it round. You don't need too much. And I'm just going to bring that further up to the top. So quite random, really. It doesn't really want to be particularly neat. 
And then I'm going to attach that because I want that to sort of stick out. Just need to pop that on a little bit more. Hi, Matthew. Yeah, you and the dogs are oh, beautiful dogs. Matthew um, runs a, a dog sanctuary um, called The Dogs Nobody Wants. Well, poor doggies that have got all sorts of terrible things wrong with them, but they have a beautiful, happy life with Matthew. Um, OK, so tail on. Got this loose bit here. Just pop that onto the base. And then I kind of like mine to be sort of sticking out a little bit. So I'm just going to move that up a little bit. Because, of course, I've shortened it now <laughs> when I thought it was a leg. <laughs> so it's not as long as it was. Pop it on and then take a little bit. of wool and just cover that up and then just tidy it up so you can see there so that we're just going to do one final touch which is the um, reverse needle so here we go right this is the reverse needle if you've bought the wool pack this is what you will have so what this does is it just um, adds some fluffiness to the um, the project and what it does is it pulls the wool out I don't know if you can see that wool pulling out this is also great if you've got seams to cover up using a reverse needle and then trimming the wisps actually works really well so pull all that wool out um, I just want to show you the difference between, so that's a 40 reverse, which is a finer reverse needle. This is a 32, and I use this for other projects, but it it is really, um, no, it's not. Where's the 32 gone? I thought I had the 32. Obviously not. The 32 is really fierce, so that's why I like to use this, because if you've got a 32, it will jump out of your hand unless you're holding it really, really tightly, and I don't want to lose any of the shape. So all you do is go along, and then I like to do the tip of the tail as well, because I like to have wisps coming out of the tip of the tail. So just like so. Can you see how that's pulling that wool out? And it's just brilliant for detail. It's great for above the eyes. You know, you can create some lovely sort of wispy areas. It really softens things. And then because we've got the white underneath, if you wanted to create a little bit of contrast um, around the body, you know, some extra detail, then do that on the head and then just go along and trim. And you can see you've got these little bits just poking through. And then here, you can just brush the coat down. I've got a little sort of eyebrow brush here, but you can just brush that down and leave it nice and wispy. And then if you go here, you know, they've got really sort of, they've got really fluffy faces, haven't they? So you could really go to town here. You don't even need to, to trim these. And you can just leave those nice and long if you want but I, I love using the reverse needle and it just it comes in useful for so many things it's great for all sorts of projects you use it with hairs as well and you see how that's and then you can just sort of wisp it down with your hands if you want you could trim it close and um that's pretty much it there we go so i'm just going to pop back up um, I'm just checking to make sure I haven't missed anything. We've done the tail. Oh, I always trim the tail. I don't leave the bits long on the tail. I like to trim those. So it just looks kind of fluffy. And then if you want to go around, you know, and tidy it up and, and trim any wisps if you want, if you just make sure you need your scissors are really sharp and close, but don't chop into anything. And then all you need to do is if you've got the crown, is pop your crown on. 
you know, pop his eyes back in. Um, pop your crown on. If you've got the wool bundles, you'll have a sash in there. Some of you will have a pearl because I didn't have pearls until this week. So the only one out in the last sort of few orders because um, I didn't have any pearls. There we go. But anything sparkly will do. Um, so you've got your sash and your gorgeous little crown if you want to add that. And um, there we go. Back. We're back in the room. We're back in the room. So thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to, some of you may have seen, I'm just working on a new project for us to do in the, the felt hub. So it's going to be uh, like a little sort of Cornish beach scene with seagulls. And I've got all these amazing colours that I'm going to be using. It's just going, it's going to be like Balamori, basically. Um, so we're going to be doing that at some point. We won't, the, the whole thing will take a while. So I'll, I'll probably just do a house and the wall and the background and the seagulls and what have you. But yeah, we'll we'll work on that and we'll do another live. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, hopefully I'll get to work on that over the next few days. I'm just going to take a few days off. So if I'm not in, around in the felt, I will answer your questions, but um, just give me a chance to get back to you. Um, I'm just looking to see. So if you've got any questions, um, then, you know, put them in the comments and um, or any questions in the felt hub. What I'll do is I'll download this and um, you can watch it at your leisure. OK, so I just want to say massive thank you. It's five past nine. We've done pretty well, actually. That's not bad. That's not bad for two hours. Um, have a, an amazing long weekend if you're in the UK. Have an amazing weekend everywhere else that you are. And um, thanks for all the support and thanks for all the purchases um, This of the corgis. I mean, it was crazy. I'm sorry if you didn't get a crown, but it was crazy. And don't forget the Jubilee sale event in the, on the website is running until the end of the weekend, probably into Monday morning. And you can use your VIP code that is either on your newsletter or in the felt hub. Use one or the other. Don't use both. Um, just use one or the other. Um, and have a smashing weekend. And um, I'll see you all soon. Okay. Bye. Thank you.